Welcome back to Index Card of Day 2017 with me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchill. It's card number 30, and that means that we are halfway. This one's called Simplify. Links to supplies can be found in the description box. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check off the option to be notified of upcoming videos. That way you won't miss any. So I'm starting with a gesso card and the prompt that I'm using is an actual prompt from Daisy Yellow and it's green. It was one that was a few days ago. I'm just kind of doing things terribly out of order. And so I'm creating a green background here. But beyond that, I am taking the prompt as in green being environmentally friendly and you know, just simplifying what you use and how you use our world. Just lead a more simple life. So that's kind of where my quote came from. So I'm using three colors here, lemon zest, fresh lime, and cut grass. And I'm applying them with my Rangers felt, applicated, felt pads that I've put on to teacher stamps with Velcro from the dollar store. You can use spools, you can use um, blocks that you have, you can use also um, medicine bottles to Velcro it on. You don't have to buy the Ranger applicators, but I like having an applicator for every color, so this is the route I took. So with the Dilutions paints, the first coat always looks a little bit patchy. Stop, let it dry, or use the heat tool, and then come back and apply. It's really important, I find, with the Dilutions paints to dry it in between. And then I just blend until I get a background that I like. And I must say, this is one of the things that I love the most about the Dilutions paints, is their blendability. So I'm using this Art Is stencil from Crafters Workshop and I'm just using the same colors of Dilutions paints through the stencil. And I'm just trying to build some visual interest, to pattern, and texture. I want to have a very light, airy, clean looking background. In real life you can see the yellow on top of the green parts. So I'm giving this a dry and I'm thinking that the size of that stencil may have been a little too big for the size of the iCAD. I'm toying with putting some vines on there and some other kind of stencils, but then I decide I'm going to addition some of the things. And I have this partial earth that has some of that green on it. And I try that out and then I think, oh, you know what? I have a stamp, a script stamp, and green stays on. So I am going to put some green stays on with my script stamp. And that just really worked for me. So in retrospect, I could have skipped the stenciling, but it's still there and adds an extra layer of interest. So back to where I was. So I have this cutout from magazines and I'm thinking, okay, well that would work. have the earth it has that green in it and simplify that's a very nice message I like the black on the very light background and then I had this daisy in my stash and I just fell in love with this no part of this I love this so much the yellow and with the little orange in there just really really worked um, still thinking about putting some vines on there and then I decide to take my own advice and simplify Sometimes when we are doing our art journal pages or iCADs, we just try to, th we throw too much at it. Sometimes less is more.
So just using gel medium to seal this down. It also gets rid of any sheen from the magazine and gives everything a nice matte finish. It also prepares it in case you want to add any color using watercolor crayons or inktense pencils or blocks. I'm just going to cut out the white that's in between these loops on these letters. I just find it distracting and I just I don't want it so I call this near fussy cutting and I will put a link to my mixed media technique tag video where I talk about how to select fonts and some of the things to consider um, when selecting fonts and ways of altering the fonts. There's a lot you can do that really adds to or finishes your page or card. So I want the edge a little bit darker and I'm just using the stays on green pad mainly because it's there. I could have used um, Tim Holtz's distress crayons or my Inktense blocks, but this worked. So instead of outlining it with black, I am using deep indigo in my Inktense pencils. And I'm just kind of activating it. And I'm not sure I'm going to like it, so I try a little section and I like it. The blue really goes well with the green and it's not as harsh. I think the black would have been too stark. So after I outline this, I'm just going to take a brush and get put some water on it and just activate it. And just kind of give some shadow and shading to this. I decided not to add any color to the actual daisy flower. I really liked how it was. I didn't want to make it brighter or anything. So here it's just a matter of kind of teasing out the color and getting it to spread on the surface to get a look you like. Nobody can really teach that to you. You have to develop something, your own sense of what you like. And then that's fine. Some people like to outline their pieces with thicker, like a Sharpie marker. That's not me. I'm, this is more my style, this or floating. Alternatively, you could have just left this without any shading and it would have been lovely as well. I always wonder, you know, I give, it, give things a little bit of a test and I ask myself, am I adding value when I do this? Is it improving it or am I just adding something for the sake of adding something? And it kind of, you know, this looks almost like a dark green. It doesn't read as a blue. So then I decide, you know, I have this out. I'm just going to make a puddle and I am going to splatter with the Inktense pencils. You can splatter with the Inktense pencils and blocks. You just want to make sure that you get enough pigment in it so that the splatter is dark enough or gives you the effect you like. In fact, the Inktense blocks are very versatile and can be used to do most of the techniques that you see being done. When I started Mixed Media, I had just recently purchased the Inktense blocks and I was determined to see if I could do those techniques with the blocks. And I made a series of, I think, seven videos where I show you, yes, you can. They are still out there. They are amongst my very first videos and there is a lot of information there. So if you have Intense Blocks or are thinking of buying Intense Blocks, check that out because you would be surprised at 
how flexible they are and how versa how versatile you know if you make that purchase and that investment in them these are not necessarily cheap but because they can do so much you don't need to buy everything else and whatever supply you have I just encourage you to figure out how to use it best push its limits try the different techniques with it I think that's one of the great the things they want us to believe in in the commercial world of art journaling and all these products that you need all these products in order to do that do these things and you don't you need a few products and you need to be creative and you need to figure out how to use them so there I just used my gelatos to give it a little bit of a black edge but I wanted it more smoky and softer I didn't want it so stark I'm just touching up some places that the printer didn't print completely with my Posca pen Posca pens are permanent on non-porous surfaces, but on porous surfaces, like a surface that might have gel medium, they are not permanent and they can be rubbed off. They are water-based. I really like the simplicity of this iCAD. I think everything really fit well together. I invite you cut out some magazine pictures and collage them onto an iCAD. Find it, create an interesting background and make put everything together. And then come and post it on my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media, Creative Katie. Here are some close-ups of the finished iCAD. Now, what's not to love about that? Next time, I think I might try to paint the daisy myself and maybe do this on a canvas, but painting the daisy myself. So again, sometimes I really like the idea of using the iCAS as a way of trying things out, seeing color combinations if they work, and then being able to take those ideas and use them on a canvas or an art journal page or a card and this would be one that I would definitely do in another fashion. Bye for now!